The Return of the King is about the first Anglo-Afghan war, which is one of those old chestnuts of imperial history. There's a whole shelf of books on this subject stretching back to the, to the 1850s. Um, where this book is different is it is literally the first book to be written about this war which uses Afghan sources as well. I did a whole series of extended trips to Afghanistan in 2009-2010 to gather this material. I was quite sure that uh, as this was such a central moment in Afghan history because the Afghans are good historians. They, they've always from the time of Bab or even earlier uh, recorded their, their, the events of their, uh, of their kings and their battles and so on. And it took a few journeys and a, and, and a lot of rooting around, but in the end I came back with nine completely unused Afghan accounts of the war. The whole scheme of this book was predicated on, on the fact that there are very many, very strong parallels between what's going on now in Afghanistan and what happened in the 1840s. But I thought it was just going to be very general, a, a general story of how of two similar wars the West goes in, they try and affect regime change, it goes wrong uh, and they leave again. That I believed was the extent of the parallel when I started work on this. It turns out the parallels are very close indeed. I mean most remarkably, and I don't think this has ever been said, President Karzai is from a tiny sub-tribe called the Popolzai, which was the same tribe that Shah Shuja Mulk was from in the 1840s. Shah Shuja is brought down by the Gilzais. The Gilzais today make up the foot soldiers of the Taliban. In a nutshell, it's the same war being fought with slightly different flags 170 years later.